and welcome to this Pilates Mathwork session where we are working through, I guess, building blocks, starting with some slightly simpler exercises and then making them more and more challenging. We'll warm up as we normally do and then we'll get down to the, the challenges. So let's start off with standing on one leg. You know, bring your legs together, the feet together. Keep the knees a little bit soft as you stand tall through the spine. So reach the crown of your head up to the ceiling. Think of that width across your chest the arms just hanging off your shoulders. Think about that center line, that plumb line running down through the body. So from your ankles, right the way up between the legs, through the pubic bone, belly button, breastbone, throat and nose. And trying to keep that line centered as we move the legs. So starting off with your right leg, let's float the heel off the mat and then pick your toes off the mat and see if you can stand on one leg and then slowly lower that leg back down and swap the legs. Breathing out as you float the leg up, breathing in as you pause, and breathing out as you lower the leg down. We'll keep alternating the legs and trying to keep that center line through the body. The leg doesn't have to lift too high, I'm bringing mine to hip height, but all you could do is float your foot just off the floor, because the aim is to stand on one leg. So you don't need to bring the leg all the way up. Let's do two more to each side. Gently mobilizing hips and knees and a little bit through the ankles as we work through the legs but always working with a strong center keeping that sense of connection through the front of the body. We'll finish your last set with the left leg. release back down if you need to shake your legs out otherwise just bring them uh, let's bring them to shoulder width apart this time sorry hip width apart that narrow position through the legs uh, we'll come into shoulder drops next so this is a lovely exercise to mobilize the upper back muscles and joints um, imagine you are standing against a wall behind you and you're drawing your arm back into that wall so you can feel that connection across the upper back we're going to bring the arms to shoulder height and the palms turn in to face one another and then as I say you feel that the arms draw back into your shoulders so you have that lovely sense of width across the chest and that sense of connection in the back of the body. As you breathe in your right arm is going to reach forwards and then you breathe out you draw the shoulder back. Breathe in left arm reaches forwards, breathe out draw the shoulder back. I'll show you from the side as well. So the right shoulder comes away from that wall behind you and then you pull the shoulder back into the wall. We're trying to keep the hips level to the front, the, um, the spine level to the front, but obviously the shoulders kind of wrapping around and moving around the rib cage. We'll do two more to each side with the arms working separately. work together as you breathe in, reaching forward, spreading those shoulder blades apart, breathing out, pulling them back. Two more to go. Last one. And then let the arms rest to your sides. Give your shoulders some little circles to release any tension. Then let's come back to that same starting position, but this time turn your palms down to face the floor and we're going to come into window arms. So from here, I'm um, starting off with that sense of width across the chest, the shoulders pinned back against that wall. Keep your knees soft again and feel the tummy engage. And we want you to feel that the rib cage, the lowest of your ribs, holds down towards your hips. So you have that lovely sense of connection at the front of the body. Start by bending your elbows sideways and backwards in line with your shoulders. Then tip your hands upwards so they face the ceiling. Then reach your arms up to the ceiling and bring them back in front. Breathe out to go back. Breathe in to tip. Breathe out to reach to the ceiling and breathe in to return. We'll do four more sets. They can get quite tiring for the shoulder joints and the arm joints, but it's a really nice exercise to mobilize elbows and shoulders. And again, to remind you, of that connection at the front of the body. Good. 
good, last one to finish. And if the arms come all the way down this time, then rest to your sides again, release the shoulders with some circles or shrugs, whatever helps you to let go of tension in the body. And we'll finish off standing with a waist twist. And we will leave the legs as they are, but I really want you to feel that the pelvis doesn't move with the body. So when the spine rotates, the hips should be able to continue to face forward. We don't have a lot of rotation in our bodies, 45 degrees if we're lucky in terms of that mid spine rotation. So see if you can aim for that whilst keeping the pelvis still. Let's bring the arms into the traditional Cossack position, but today I want you to make the arms more active. So rather than just placing them one on top of the other, I want you to slide them a little further across so the heel of one hand rests on one elbow joint, the back of the other wrist rests underneath the elbow joint. Make sure the elbows are lower than your shoulders and then push one arm down and push the other arm up. So you have that real sense of connection and work into the upper arms, but try to relax your shoulders. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, twist just your upper body to the right and breathe in as you come back. Breathe out as you go to the left and breathe in to come back. We'll do maybe three more sets to each side. When you come back from this one, swap the arms around so the underneath arm comes on top and again you do two more sets to each side. Just gently working through the arms, through the spine, keeping the pelvis centered. Last one to the left. And then relax the arms, shake everything out and release any tension. Then to warm us up for sitting, um, often our hip flexors and the muscles and ligaments at the front of our hips can make it uncomfortable to sit. So we're gonna do a little stretch for them. Hopefully it'll help us when we come down to sit in a moment. And we're gonna come into high kneeling. So as you come down onto the floor, uh, remember that if you need any cushions to pad your knees, you can use a little thin cushion, you can use a knee pad if you have one, you can use a towel. Uh, we're gonna start off with your right leg in front of you to stretch the left hip. So bring that foot in front Place it onto the mat and make sure that there's space between the knee and between the foot so you're not, um, you don't have one leg right in front of the other. I'm going to turn to the side just so you can see a side on view for this position. So you'll notice that the front leg is in a 90 degree angle, the back leg is in a 90 degree angle. And the pelvis is in a neutral position to start, so the hips, the pubic bone are level with one another to begin with. Then. What I want you to try to do is tilt your pelvis to the north. So imagine your tailbone tucking down and under, the pubic bone pushing forwards, the hips tucking back and the tummy pulling towards your spine. And then you release back to a neutral position. So we're breathing out as we tuck the tailbone under. Breathe in as you release. So a nice strong tummy, scooping the tummy in towards the spine. As you tilt the pelvis to the north, hopefully you'll feel a stretch down the front of the hip or maybe just the front of the thigh. If you don't feel anything, you're probably one of the few lucky people who doesn't have tight hips. Um, most of us will, have, will feel something. We should feel a little stretch. Let's do two more on this side. Let's swap the legs. So now bringing the left leg in front, I'll turn to the other side. Stay on that right knee, place the feet in a good position, pelvis in neutral, spine in neutral to begin with, and then tucking the tailbone down, tipping the pelvis forwards, and then releasing. Breathing out to come into that posterior tilt, breathing in to release. You probably notice the lower back will start to flatten. You lose your lumbar curve and then you find your lumbar curve. Watch that you don't move your whole body though. This should be able to be done without moving the upper back. So try to isolate the movement to the lower back and the pelvis. 
and obviously hopefully feeling that stretch down the front of that right leg thigh or hip or both three more to go When you're finished come down onto both of your knees you can come back into a low kneeling position or maybe all the way down into a child's pose stretch from there and i hope this camera angle works i'm going to come into our sitting exercises so please feel free if it makes you more comfortable to have your leg um, to sit on top of a yoga block if you prefer. Um, this often helps to keep the front of the hips more open and to make us find a more neutral lumbar spine rather than feeling really tight and crouched over. So if you have one, use it. If you don't have one, you could prop yourself up with a few more cushions um, or just try your best to maintain the straightest back that you can. So, uh, we're going to start off with a spine stretch forward. We're going to start off with a nice basic one. So, come into a long frog position where the soles of your feet connect together. You're sitting up really tall through the spine, the hands just resting on the front of your shins. And we're going to start with just a gentle spine stretch. So, the tummy draws towards your spine. We nod the chin to the chest. And bone by bone, we let the spine gently come forwards towards the wall in front of us. The hands sliding down the legs, taking a breath in at the bottom and breathing out as we come back to a tall sitting position. We're gonna do two more of those. I'm just gonna turn to the side for the other two just so you can see my back from a side on position. So it's a straight back to start, the tummy draws in and then the spine goes forwards. The crown of the head reaching to the wall in front the spine lengthening bone by bone by bone, breathing in at the bottom, breathing out to come all the way back up. So just one more set like this. When you get back to the top, let's try the same exercise, but now with straight legs. So we're preparing ourselves for a more challenging exercise called the saw and it's really nice to start off simply and to build up the challenges just to see what our body is capable of. So we're going to stretch the legs out in front. Now you can have them glued together or you can have them out in a V position, whichever feels comfortable for your body or better for your body. If you struggle to have straight legs and a straight back, as most of us do, Soften the knees, let them release a little bit and that should help you to sit up tall through the spine. Reach the arms out in front this time, they will be shoulder width apart and parallel to the floor and the um, hands are just a little bit lower than the shoulders. Relax the shoulders, lengthen your neck, draw the tummy to your spine, take a deep breath in. As you breathe out, nod the chin to the chest and now go forwards again, bone by bone by bone. This time keep the arms parallel to the floor, don't let them come down to the mat. Take a deep breath in, breathe out, roll yourself all the way back up, sitting tall and straight. Breath in to prepare the body, breathing out, curling the spine forwards, bone by bone. Your feet are flexed, are you feeling that stretch in the back of the legs as well as the back of the spine? And one last one to finish. The next time you get to the top, relax your arms. You can bend your knees, you can give a little hug to release the back if you need to, um, or you can come back into long frog. So the next phase to build up our strength is to come into an exercise called spine twist. And Again, the legs are straight or as straight as possible and they're glued together this time. Um, but you can have the knees slightly bent again if that is helpful for you in order to get a straight back. We're going to have the hands behind the head and 
The back of the head pushes into the hands and the chest lifts. So you're really nice and tall through the body. We'll take a breath in to prepare. As you breathe out, twist the upper body to the right. And breathe in, come back to the center. Breathe out as we go to the left. And breathe in to come back to the center. Keep rotating. I'm just going to turn to the side as you carry on. I'm oh, sorry, to the front on. I want you to be aware of your legs in this position. They should be able to stay really, really still as you twist from side to side. So just be aware that the feet don't shift or the knees don't shift. The movement is just in the upper back. After the step to the left, we'll do one more to each side. Really lengthening the sides of the body into the spine, lifting, rotating. And then release the arms. And again, you can bend your knees, you can give them a little hug, or you can come into another spine stretch forward if that helps to release the lower back. So the last challenge is an exercise called the saw. And it's a combination of a spine stretch forward and a waist twist. The arms are gonna be moving much more in this position. So one arm will be reaching across the body to the outside of your foot towards your little toe. And then your hand, if you imagine as a saw, you're going to imagine trying to saw off your little toe by adding a little a pulse. And then we alternate arms. And while the other, one arm is in front of us, the other arm is back behind us in opposition to really open up and lengthen across the chest. So for this exercise, we're going to have wide legs of a V-shape position. And I'm going to come slightly forward just so I've got the room behind me to take my arms back. Try to flex your feet if you can. Remember to soften the knees if you need to. Sit up really tall, open those arms out to your sides. So let's begin by twisting your spine to the right. Bring the left arm across your body and stretch forward now, bone by bone by bone towards the outside of your foot. Add your little pulsing saw, roll back up, twist to the center, and then twist to the left. Bring the right arm across the body, go down towards the outside of the little foot, little toe, pulse, and roll back and untwist. I keep going, I'm gonna to turn to the side again, just if that helps for a view perspective. So we rotate to one side, we spine stretch forwards, add the pulse, uncurl, untwist, twist to the other side, curl forwards, pulse, and roll back up. Let's do one last one to each side. Drawing the tummy in, the other arm pulling back, last one to the left to finish. Come all the way back up, bend the knees if you need to, give them a hug if you wish, release the lower back, release those muscles we've been working. And from there, we're going to come into the second part of this se series, and we're going to come down onto your backs into relaxation position. So I'll leave you there for now, and I'll see you on the mat in a moment. Bye.